Go for it. Hi, Nicole. Uh, this is Steve Chappell. I've been doing uh, research into partial gravity locomotion, so I'm interested in the EVA research that's going on outside the station. And I'm wondering if you might be able to talk about the qualitative and quantitative uh, physiological measurements that they might be taking as part of that research. Okay, and I, I just wanted to say I definitely will pass on your greetings to Ron. He asked me to do the same for you guys. Um, they are out there today, and like I mentioned, they're looking at the 3 8 gravity. We've got some weights on them that, you know, with the with the flotation out in the water that is, that is simulating that gravity. Uh, they are doing different tasks like uh, timed walks, time runs, um, squat and pick up a rock, you know, fall down and recover, climb a ladder, shoveling. And um, with each of these, we're doing a baseline without any of the, um, the external, uh, we could say we have a metal structure that's being used that is simulating a, a life support pack. And they do a baseline data collection without that on. And then they put this metal support structure on their back and some support divers are reconfiguring it to different CG configurations. Some are further aft, some are further up. And, they, um, and they're going through these different tasks using those different configurations. I believe there's like six different configurations. And, and, and they're finding very, very easily that some just are not, you know, not as effective as others. And they're, you know, so they're, they're going to be able to provide all of this information to the advanced spacesuit designers. And, and hopefully we'll get a much better um, suit than what our friends from Apollo had. I mean, they found they were, you know, it was very easy to get off balance and, and to fall down and, and not so easy to recover. So, so we're looking forward to good stuff from this. And, Poirier is talking about communications. You also are doing some human performance testing, looking at latency in communications. Can you talk to us a little bit about that, too? Yeah, we're looking at latency. With, uh, Dr. Anvari yesterday, when he performed the surgical task, uh, had some imposed latency on, on those tasks. We are also um, do, going through a series of experiments where we're wearing a, a pretty sophisticated EEG cap with all the sensors on our heads, measuring our brain waves while we do different tasks on the computer. Um, in this picture, you can see uh, Ross and I putting that net onto Dr. Tim. And once you have the net on, they're, they're, they seem like very simple tasks. Trace a line around a box, trace a line around an arc, um, catch a ball that's dropping into little little buckets. Um, and you do that real time and then with different latencies imposed and they're measuring the, you know, the, the, the effectiveness of the, or how efficient you are with those tasks as well as um, the brainwave activity that goes along with them. Thank you, Aquarius. Embry Riddle, do you have a question? Yes, I was wondering uh, how has the pressure change uh, affected your reaction time with uh, the various tasks you do during the day? Actually, I haven't noticed any, any change in performance um, due to the pressure. What is interesting, um, and we noticed this over the last couple days, is as the, the seas swell more or there's more wave activity on the surface, you feel those pressure changes down here in the habitat. So it's kind of like you're going up and down in an airplane all the time where you're having to clear your ears on a continuous basis. And um, that's really the only, only kind of pressure effect that I've noticed since being down there. No, no obvious effect on, on task performance, but others may disagree. <laughs> Aquarius, we have some engineering students that are also joining us today. Could you talk to us a little bit about the water lab activity? Water lab, yeah. Water lab is a, uh, a structure that we build outside of the habitat on the seafloor. It's actually, actually just a bunch of PVC pipes that are, are hooked together with, uh, with bolts, but um, we use it, and you can see it in this picture here, we use it to simulate the kind of activities you would do if you were first, uh, you know, say, landing on the moon and needing to establish, say, a, a communications tower or some other kind of structure outside of your main, your main uh, um, landing cap. And on this mission, we're actually simulating that we are building a communications tower because on the moon, um, once you get a certain distance away you're, you know, from, your, um, from your main vehicle, the, 
the horizon is short enough that you can you will lose calm with them. So the the idea is that you would build these stations around your area so that oh sea turtle swimming by. <laughs> so that you um, could maintain communications with people going out and exploring the surface around. I was actually out today and started the, the build of our water lab, and it's, it's really a very fun activity. Um, you get to spend time out in the Superlight uh, rig and out in the water outside of, uh, of Aquarius, and it's just fun playing with the, the tools. Henry Riddle, your next question. Uh, yeah, I actually have another question. Um, I, you mentioned earlier that you were trying to simulate multiple times gravity uh, while out in the water. Is there any way to simulate the uh, stresses that will be caused to the cardiovascular and respiratory physiological responses uh, as if you were in prolonged exposure to multiple gravity? Well, I think we we have a little trouble doing that down here because we're not out in the water, you know, for a really extended period of time. Um, um, fortunately, though, with the activities like Ron and Dave are doing out there today, you can get some feel very quickly for, um, you know, how how exhausted you'll be after using one one configuration of the uh, backpack versus another configuration. They they very easily identified um, the other day when they were doing the, the lunar um, configurations, which ones they would and wouldn't want to use if they had to be, um, you know, be outfitted with them on the moon. Ambry Riddle, do you have a question? Uh, how long are the NEMA missions planned to continue before long duration missions to the lunar uh, plant? Well, I think we're going to continue to use Aquarius and, you know, from the NASA standpoint, the NEMO missions as a, definitely as a training bed for, um, for future astronauts going on, on long duration space flights. Um, you know, of course, we're trying to target getting back to the moon in the 2015, 2018 timeframe. And uh, I think that as long as this facility is here, NASA will be taking advantage of it and putting crews through through the experience that you can get down here. And what I've really liked about it is that it's not just training. I mean, we're doing very valuable science activities down here in addition to getting the training that we would need for being effective crew members on a space flight. <laughs> 